All right, so everybody at Psalm 43? Yep. Good? Okay, God is good, yes. <laughs> you know, I was going to read through this and kind of break it down. It's only five verses. Um, I know pastor doesn't want us to teach through the whole Psalms, but this is five, so I'm going to walk us through the whole thing. And then we're going to concentrate on verse five, okay? So Psalm 43, verse one. Hey, Chad. Thank you. Okay, Psalm 43, verse one. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man, deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and into your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God. To God, my exceeding joy. And I will praise you with the lyre, O oh God, my God. Why are you down? Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. Uh, so I'm reading out of the ESV this morning. I know we all are NKGV. I forgot my NKGV Bible, so that's why it's a little different. Um, so Psalm 43. Is said to have been part of Psalm 42, but was separated. That's why it sounds similar to what Ozzy uh, read last week. And there is some common language in here, and we'll get to that. Uh, so I want to just cover these five verses real quick. Uh, vindicate me in verse 1. This is an appeal from the writer to God for justice in the face of his enemies, an enemy that pursues him wrongfully and is pursuing him based on lies, deceitful. Uh, the psalmist begs God to deliver him or save him from this turmoil brought on by these people who are pursuing him. I take refuge in verse 2. Here we hear a cry to God, asking him why he has left the writer feeling abandoned and has left him alone in his anxieties brought on by the, oppress by the oppression of his enemies. God, I trust in you. Why have you abandoned him? He knows where his trust is, but he feels that God is not there. Verses 3 and 4, light and truth, are often placed together uh, when referring to God's instruction to his people. Light my path, Lord. Bring me back to the place of safety into your home or dwelling. Guide me and light my way and help me to see you through this dark time of uncertainty. A couple verses come to mind in this. Uh, Jesus comfort, comforts his own disciples um, and saying that, or comforts the world in his own words, in four, John 14, 6, saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Psalm 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. In verse 5, we read a statement that is repeated two times in Psalm 42, um, in verses 5 and 11. The writer here expresses an unrest within himself brought, in, brought on by the feelings of abandonment by God but moves away from that and expresses his hope, where his hope ultimately lies, and that is in God. So verse 5 um, is where I would like to camp out for a bit. Uh, throughout Psalm 43, we see the psalmist expresses frustrations with the sufferings, with his sufferings, but also makes an effort to remember God's faithfulness and resolves at the end in verse 5 to look to the future and the hope instead of staying locked in his sufferings. Why are you downcast, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? The writer here is preaching to his soul. Why are you in such unrest and anxiety? He reminds his soul, hope in God. This is where our true hope lies. Not in what happens in this world, but in the hope and promises of God. Sometimes we go through things in this life that throw us off course a bit and get us to question things, to question God with a why me? Our perspective gets horizontal instead of vertical. We start to look at only what we are going through instead of where we are headed. Sometimes we can know something in our heads, but our hearts and our souls get rep restless and we can get lost in the feelings of the moments. Those moments can cause us great anxiety or drop us into a pit of depression and we lose sight of the hope we have in Jesus Christ. In these moments, <clears throat> we need to preach to our hearts or our souls and be reminded of where we are 
of where our hope and salvation lies. Jesus encouraged his own disciples in John 16, 33, I have said these things to you that you may have peace in the world. You will have, you will have tribulation. Not that we might have it, but we're going to have tri trials, tribulations, and troubles all through our lives. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Look at the end of the Look at the end of, uh, chapter, of the chapter in verse 5. We see the words hope and salvation. The psalmist here knows in whose hands his life is, um, is in, even through the great turmoil. When we come to the table each week together, we confess that Jesus died and took our burden for us and rose again and defeated death. Jesus is our hope, and he is our salvation because of what he did for us. So let's take a moment and uh, go to the table right now in communion, and uh, we can all partake together. Well, Father, we are so thankful that no matter what we face in this world, that we are never alone. You are always with us, and you will never leave us nor forsake us. We have the promise that whatever we face here, you are there. And we thank you for your grace and mercy you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And thank you for making a way for us to be right with you. Uh, we lift up Pastor Landon today as he preaches the truth in your word. Father, guide him. Our hearts and minds are open to your word, and let them take root and lead us. We also lift up our kids' church teachers, that we teach in a way that speaks to the kids, and that you use us as vessels to teach your word. Thank you for today and the opportunity to fellowship um, in your truth together and in love. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.